Hey guys, I'm back in the shop again today. Today's project is I am gonna mount this winch on my PJ trailer. Um, so I did this a couple years ago on a previous trailer, um, but this one, I got this, I picked this up this summer and I wanna get a, a winch mount on it. And on my last trailer, I just took a receiver tube and pretty simply welded it up there on that front frame and then reinforced it and then it gave a pretty you know pretty simple pull point but this particular trailer it's a 19 actually the deck is um, it's like 19 and a half feet but it is a it's actually like a 17 plus two and a half so it's a tilt deck um, but this head section here is uh, is stationary so the concept of just mounting the winch up front um, I don't feel like it's going to work very good because when this thing is tipped up, you can imagine if the winch was mounted up front here, um, there'd be a there'd be a major stress point pulling across the front of the trailer. Um, I thought about I thought about actually building a roller of some sort to put up on the front here. I did see on some trailer that they had done that. And they did mount the winch up here. I think they mounted it up a little bit higher. And then the cable just basically went over the top of that roller. Um, but I don't think that that's really necessary in this particular application. What I've decided to do is I am going to mount a D-ring up here on the front of the tilt section. And then I'm gonna set this up so that I use a shackle and um, actually a receiver hitch here. And I've got the winch. I'm using a, a Badland uh, ZXR 9000 is what I'm using here. And I went ahead and mounted it on a, um, on a receiver, a portable receiver uh, mount. So it's got a regular you know, two inch receiver that goes in there. And um, that's gonna actually slide into the sleeve so the winch will come in here, and then I'm gonna have this hitch mount that's gonna slide into the sleeve on this side, and that's gonna bolt up to that shackle to the D-ring. So um, I think when it, when it all gets put together, I think it's gonna work out okay. So I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is, rather than, this is, um, this is pretty beefy C-channel here. It's like five inch, almost five inches, I think. But the stuff is only 3 16 and so I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this quarter inch plate and I'm actually gonna weld the, the D-ring onto that quarter inch plate and then I'll weld that to the top of the trailer. That way it's, it gives it more reinforcement and there'll be plenty of strength there. I don't know that I would ever pull anything hard enough to actually you know, bend or distort that, but I don't wanna take any chances. So it's easy enough to reinforce it. So I'm gonna do that first. We're gonna get that welded down to the trailer and then I'll kind of show you this whole setup, what I've, what I've got in mind here. All right, I put two good passes on there, so got burned in good. That baby's not going anywhere. Now I just need to get this welded onto the trailer.
All right, I'm going to let that cool off, and then I'll get a good coat of primer and paint on there. But I'm going to show you how I plan to set this up. So I've got this piece. This is a piece of, it's actually a receiver tube that I used for another project. And I just had a little, little bit of a leftover chunk and just enough to make work for this. So I already drilled a couple of holes in here to accept you know, a standard, a standard 5 8 pin. So what I'm going to do, so I guess first I'll go ahead and I'm going to take this. This is just a little drop hitch that I had laying around, nothing special. I'm going to use for this. So I'll slide that in there, put a pin through that sleeve. I guess I can go ahead and put this on. Now I've got this shackle. This is like a, I think it says it's a six and a half ton shackle, so it's stronger than I'll need. Oops. Shackle goes on the D-ring. And then the winch. All right. So there, I've got more strength than I will ever need. Everything rated here is like six tons, um, more than this winch can actually pull. So, next step is to sort out my battery connections. And what I did for those, I should say too, before I get too far, my primary power source, since this is all removable, is going to be a jump pack. And then, as a backup to my jump pack, I also have a set of 25 foot jumper cables. So I needed to get something something onto the leads for the winch so that I could easily get um, you know get the jump pack hooked onto. My first thought <clears throat> I actually made these aluminum tabs and put those on there and I thought well that'll that'll work good put those cables on there. But then the more that I got thinking about it and the way these cables the way the uh, you know, the clamps and the cables are, if you just put that on a flat surface like that, you really get very little actual contact. All only contact I have is just these far back teeth here. So I guess it'd be four very small points on the back teeth. And you can see how loose that is in there. And there's a lot of current running through uh, this connection when you're running a when you're running a winch. So I started trying to think of what else I could do, and I came up with this solution. So this is just three-quarter inch, um, you know, regular copper water pipe, and I took a couple of sections. I don't know where my tape is. I think those are about three inches. Yeah. So I took a couple of three-inch sections, and I just took a hammer over to the anvil and obviously I just flattened the end out and I kind of rounded rounded the edges off a little bit so they weren't sharp, sharp and popped a hole in there. And my thought is on the way these clamps are made, so on this side it's just regular square, you know, it's kind of squared off, but on this side it's actually rounded. So I think it's actually designed, you know, so it fits on a battery, on a round battery terminal. So with that rounded side, if I stick that in like that, now you can see that I've got I've got excellent contact there. You know, rather than just having a couple of little teeth on there, I've got good copper to copper contact. And I think that's gonna make a, a really good secure connection. And then I made these a little bit extra long because my thought is again, battery pack and the jump pack is my primary source primary source of power, but if that thing ever runs dead, my backup is to go to the uh, jumper cables off the truck. And I made them long enough that I can actually put both of those on there. So, um, you know, if I had a really heavy load and needed additional power, I could run the, the truck and the jump pack on there on those connections. So that's what I'm, that's my thinking there. 
and these are just going to go on the leads. Like that. And I'll tighten those down really well. And then I'll show you the next step that I've got in mind for, for these ends. So the last time that I did this, um, I'll leave a link to that other video, by the way, in case you're interested. On that last one, I used a 5,000 pound Harbor Freight winch, which power wise, it was okay. Um, and it was actually much lighter than this. And I made, I made um, this receiver bracket rather than buying one. So it, the whole system was a lot lighter. Um, obviously it didn't have as much power. It was a 5,000 pound winch as opposed to a 9,000. And it was also, I forget, I'm not a winch expert, but the 5,000 is like a, I think it's a, a, a permanent magnet winch, I think they call it. And it has a really low duty cycle, like 5% or something. So um, if you go by the book, you really can't run those things too hard without taking big pauses. This is a, um, I don't know, it's like a wound winch. Again, apologize, I don't know the specifics of winches, but um, this one has a lot longer duty cycle and is made for you know more continuous pulling. So that's the reason I went with this one. Um, so on my last winch, I actually had a, a plastic box, and out of the box, I actually had two bolts that stuck out of the side, and the bolts then would get clamped onto with my, with my jump pack. And that worked okay, but it was, um, you know, they're just steel bolts, and, and steel, for one thing, is, um, the, is not near as conductive as what copper is. And um, in, this, in that case, I had to, I had to um, have a place to house all the electronics to the winch, because that 5,000 pound is really more like an ATV winch, so it doesn't come with its own, you know, box to hold the solenoid and everything. So here, all I have to do is just manage my uh, my leads. So I don't want these things just flopping around. So obviously when I want power to them, I don't want them to, you know, ground out accidentally. So I came up with this idea and I'm not sure how much, how well this is going to work, but I took a, took a stick. This is actually, um, I think this is a handle off of a, like a, um, like a paint roller extension, basically comes with a threaded end on it. And I just cut it off. Yeah, here, this is what this got cut off of. So I just cut this off and I took the flap disc on my grinder and I just started to kind of whittle this thing down until I got to the general shape of what this three quarter inch copper was. And I kind of flattened them out because the copper's kind of flattened on the end. So the idea here is I'm gonna stick these on the end of this, of this stick. And what this is gonna do is it's going to keep every keep first of all it's going to keep these two ends um, you know stationary so they can't flop around and accidentally ground out on something. It's I made this long enough that I can actually strap it to the handle of the of this carrier either just you know probably just with a zip tie um, or some kind of removable closure, and that way it stays right there and there um, you know there's no chance of them making any contact with anything. The other thing too is I can, um, if this is up in the air and I want to have this a little bit a distance away, I can remove that and I could actually set this on the front of the trailer up with the battery pack. Um, this also I think will work well. If I have this hooked on the back of my truck, if I'm pulling something, again, this gives me a nice spot to have this thing mounted so I, there's no risk of these cables, you know, flopping it up against my truck hitch or something and, and shorten out. So. Not 100% sure if this is, you know, the solution that I'll use long term, but it seems to make sense right now, so I'm going to give it a shot. With these on this piece of wood, what I said before about you know getting good contact, um, 
I don't get that good contact because the teeth are actually hitting the wood here. So I'm just going to take a, I'm going to try with this file first. So I'm just going to kind of file around here and make a little groove that the, that the flat side of the teeth that'll be on the wood side can fit into and that way it can seat down good on the copper. All right, so I don't know how well you can see that, but I got a groove cut around there. So now, put my clamp on there. Now I've got nice, nice copper to copper contact, just like I wanted. All right, so now I just need to mount the power stick, whatever you want to call this, to the cables. And I can get it mounted up. For right now, I'm just going to take a couple of zip ties because that's what I have, and I've always got zip ties laying around. All right, we'll give this thing an initial test run here. And I have never even extracted this thing yet. Free spool works, that's good. power on. All right, so a tire isn't any effort. But I'm in the shop and that's what I've got to work with. So I will take this out and maybe put my tractor on it. We can get a little bit better test. And something else I wanted to, I guess, just mention. So <clears throat> right now, the way I've got this thing set up, there is, there's 14 feet, 14 feet from up here about the, where the fair lead is to the end of the trailer. So for any kind of a car, I think that, get, that should be plenty of room to get it up to the point. You know, once you get the front end up here, the trailer's tipped down, you're flat. And then um, if you need to pull it up further, it'd be real easy to just take a chain and you know, wrap a, wrap a chain around the, the head of the, the trailer there, run the chain through the, through the shackle, and then you can pull it the rest of the way up. That'd be really easy to do. The other thing too, and I might look into this, I probably will. So I've got all this going on back here, and this is just basically stuff that I had laying around the shop. Um, that's why I did it this way. But from where this pin goes into the winch mount, back to the shackle is 16 inches. It's actually 17 inches. So I know that they make, um, I know they make shackles that are actually have a, have a two inch throat on them. So you can run, if I had one of those, then I could, I could take six, well, I could take probably, you know, the shackle. I could easily get a foot out of the system here. And so this would come clear back here 
and that, that wide mouth shackle would just hook into the D-ring. So this whole winch would come back, and then I'd have 15 feet of trailer down there, um, you know, to actually bring a vehicle up on, which I think even for a, you know, even for a truck, that should be plenty. And actually, I think even with 14 feet, I measured the wheelbase of my truck, I think is, is right about 14 feet. So even without having to reposition it, I think I could, get a, I could get a pickup on like this. So this works for now. Again, I'll look for, I'll look for one of those uh, shackles, see if I can find one at a decent price, and that'll, that'll make the system work even better. Um, so I think let's, uh, let's put this thing to a little bit better test and see if we can pull some real weight with it. All right guys, so I wanted to give you an update. So I came up with a different design idea here. Rather than using, you know, the hitch and the receiver and the shackle and all this, I've simplified things. And I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna work really well. So um, I got a, I got a grade eight bolt. That's a 9 16 grade eight bolt. I got a, this is a two foot chunk of 3 8 chain. Run it through there, through the D-ring. And just quickly throw a washer and nut on there. And now, with that solution, first of all, I, I suck this way up before, you know, I had 16 inches of space here and I sucked that way up so I gained more than a foot. So now from the front of the winch to the end of the trailer is 15 feet. So that's that's plenty, plenty, uh, plenty long enough to get any vehicle pulled up on there. The other thing that chain does is gives me the option. So if I get, you know, a vehicle pulled up on here and if I need to scoot it up just a little bit further than what I can get with the D-ring attachment point, I can just you know, stop the vehicle, unhook it, and I can come up, take the chain, and I can wrap it. I can wrap it around this head tube, and then I've got another attachment point that I can pull. And, you know, I wouldn't want to pull a ton of weight with this tube without reinforcing it, but, you know, I think once a vehicle gets up on here and it's on the flat of the trailer, it's, it's going to pull pretty easy anyway, so I think that's going to be fine. I originally was thinking about actually taking this receiver tube, cutting it in half, and welding it right on there. And then, um, you know, if I did that, then obviously I could slide the receiver hitch in there, and then I'd have a, you know, a, a, an excellent connection there. But for my uses, I don't think I'm going to mess with that. I'm just going to, I think this chain is going to do everything I need. The other thing, too, you know, using this chain, it gives you the flexibility to hook this up to anything. Like I've seen, um, I've seen guys take winches down, you know, like back in the woods where they can't get a vehicle if they need to pull a log or pull something out of a ravine or whatever. And with this, you know, you can put a strap around a tree, hook that chain to it. And this thing is, you could, as long as you got power, you can pull pretty much anything anywhere as long as you got something heavy to anchor to. So um, I think this is going to be a good solution. So I'm going to take it out, throw the tractor on it, put a little bit of weight on it and see how it works. And I'll just show you real quick too, if you can see that. Um, so this jump pack is not fully charged. It's, uh, looks like it's about three quarters of the way charged. So we'll see how it lasts doing this pull.
Well, <clears throat> I'm happy with that. I think that works pretty well. You know, the only the only thing you can see when it um, when it's pulling, it kind of you know it kind of torques and rotates a little bit. And obviously, when you've got a chain coming around a bar and then making a turn to go to that hitch, so you know I'm not worried about that. I knew it would do that a little bit, but it's you know it's not going anywhere. You could easily like when it's down here on that D ring, you could throw a shackle on it if you wanted it a direct tie to the chain, but I'm not worried about it. So I think that's going to work well. You know, again, for it's not like I'm not like I'm pulling things up on this trailer constantly. If I was, I'd want probably a little bit more of a uh, permanent connection, but for the occasional use, I think that's going to work good. So I'm happy with it. I'll get, um, I just threw one zip tie on here. I'm gonna get some, um, probably like some Velcro straps, some heavy duty um, Velcro type straps, and that way it'll be easily removable, you know, if, if I wanna get that thing away from the, the uh, carrier for any reason. So I think that's it. We got a winner. Well, let me know what you guys think. I think if you're looking for just a real temporary, occasional use like I am, Seems to me like this is a good setup. It's real flexible. You can anchor it to anything. You know, chain can come right off. It can go right on the hitch of the truck super easy if you want to pull from there. And, you know, like I said before, the way this is set up, so that beeping is my battery pack just not happy because it's, I don't know, it's, it's a smart battery pack and it knows that it's not hooked up to an engine. Um, so that's why it's beeping, but it pulled just fine. And if I need to run those long jumper cables back here for additional power, I can easily hook on there for that, so. I think it's a winner. It's going to work for me. So appreciate you guys watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel. We'll see you on the next video.